Abu Uthman says, Allah has given me guidance and I practice Islam, but my family back home is not practicing and I do not get the courage to stop them or tell them what they are doing is wrong. For example, doing un-Islamic things like taking loans from the banks, eating with the left hand, etc. How to get the courage to speak up? First of all, Abu Uthman, I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that he keeps you steadfast on abiding by the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and sticking to the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah because this by far is the greatest blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal upon an individual. Secondly, what you're facing is merely doubts and whispers from shaitan. Allah stated clearly in the Quran in many places that Satan frequently throws fears and intimidates people so that they would not progress and follow the religion correctly. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَ فَلَا تَخَفُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Verily that Satan is intimidating you through his followers. So do not fear them, rather fear me. That is Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is what Satan does. Allah tells us that the believers, those who fear Allah, they might be afflicted by some of the whispers of shaitan. Yet once they remember, they are observant and they can see and they can avoid these things. Allah said about a najwa. And a najwa is when two speak privately in the presence of a third who does not know what's happening. This saddens him. Because they might be plotting something against him, which is prohibited in Islam. Whenever there are three of us, we must not talk and isolating the third without him participating or at least hearing and listening to what we see, what we say. Allah says, shaitan." This private talk is from Satan. And the purpose is so that he would sadden and depress the third person. And this is why it's prohibited. So there are so many places in the Quran and the Sunnah where Allah shows us the work of Satan and how it is done. Therefore, you should know that such a fear is from shaitan. Now, if it were something worldly, like someone is interested in buying a car, which you know is not a good thing to do, and you have knowledge of it, you would not hesitate to intervene. If it were something medical that you gone through, and you know that this medication has this particular side effects, and they're talking about it, you would have no problem in saying no. This is a bad medication. I had the following sentences and then I changed it and this and that happened. But you have to notice that if you speak in any other field, you would not have this fear nor intimidation. Only if you want to speak about Islamic things, then this shows you that this is from shaitan, definitely. And he's working hard to stop you from benefiting others. Now, having said that, this does not mean that you become the moral police or the Islamic police. Every time you see something wrong, uh, grow your beard. Akhi, your mustache is too long. It's exceeding your lips. Cut it short. Akhi, your trousers are below your ankles. My uh, friend, uh, uh, the way you're sitting is not right. Are oh, you eating with your left? You're doing this. Oh, you should not laugh so loudly. Don't use vulgar words. Don't. 
A'udhu Billah. No one will ever sit with you if you're like this. So, Shaykh, are you saying that I should not speak? No. You should call to Allah's way with wisdom and nice, fair preaching. And wisdom dictates that you prioritize things first. So people that you had not seen for a couple of years because you're an expat, being an expat and you're coming uh, uh, back home after two or three years and they see you and you immediately start pointing fingers at them, the first thing they would say, Wahhabi. This is what they usually say because even if they don't have the ammo to defend themselves, but this is the easiest way to defend, which is attack, tarnish your reputation, discredit you, uh, discredit you. So the right thing to do is, first, you have to have a long-term objective and a short-term objective. So your long-term objective is that they embrace Aqidat Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, that they think highly and abide by the Quran and the Sunnah. If you manage to do this, Alhamdulillah, they start to love you, they start to respect you, and when you say something, they listen to you. Not only that, they come to you seeking advice, and you will find that they, because now they trust you and love you, they send you WhatsApp messages. What do you think of this? Is this halal? Is this haram? So you become a beacon in their society, because now, you've managed to gain their love and respect. So this is a priority. Now in short-term objectives, sometimes addressing them in public would repel them from your da'wah. So try to avoid this. Try to make it one-to-one. -one. Try to always sound apologetic. So you speak to them individually, Akhi. Um, like you did something over there a few uh, minutes ago. I didn't want to address it in front of everyone else. Because, and I'm really embarrassed. I don't know how to tell you this, but please, I beg of you, do not feel angry. Yani, accept my advice. And if you don't want to accept it, I'm okay with that. But please, I, I, I really love you. Anyone, if you give an introduction like this, would say, Akhi, whatever you want to say, say it. I'm, I'm going to accept it, even if you insult me, even if you uh, uh, swear at me. I'm okay with it because your approach is beautiful. And then you start to talk about the priorities. Growing the beard is not your number one priority. Maybe uh, uh, clipping the nails is not. Uh, wrong haircuts is not. Maybe you should focus on if a person does not pray, if a person maybe says something that goes against Tawheed or curses the religion or says something that is blasphemous, this is a priority. Maybe the way they talk to their parents, you should address this to them. So focus on an issue at a time while trying to implement, not implement, to install in their hearts your respect and love. Let them feel your sincerity and inshallah you'll be able to speak to them without any fear in the future.